Hello again everybody, back with yet another video. This time, the title of this is More Coded Climate Change Propaganda Nonsense. Now, you've probably already seen that I made a video on climate change called 30 Re 33 Reasons Why Climate Change is a Pile of Bollocks. And the reason I use 33, I know it's Freemasonic code, so I was trying to push you back right up there ourselves basically but uh, I'm going to kick off with this looking at some BBC propaganda uh, which they are excellent at of course and one of the world leaders in propaganda nonsense is the BBC uh, and this one's called climate change Greenland ice melt Ooh. is accelerating so you've got to be careful guys you know we could be underwater any time now but this is my impression of the Greenland ice sheet and climate change and global warming and the greenhouse effect. It's all a pile of bullshit. And I don't believe, as we'll see later in this video, that we do have a massive sheet of ice sitting on top of Greenland. It's a very, very remote place. Very few uh, people live in there. No roads across it or anything like that. But we'll, we'll take a look at that later and jump in ahead. But uh, let's move on with BBC's propaganda, shall we? Uh, this is the assessment comes from an international team of polar... There's a word missing that should say pseudo-scientists or even liars who've reviewed all the satellite observations over a 26-year period. So two sixes for 66. And it's all about Greenland's contribution to sea level rise. But this means, this report, an additional seven centimetres of ocean rise could now be expected by the end of the century from Greenland alone. So there's a seven, guys. And it's going to, of course, it's going to put millions of people in low-lying coastal regions at risk of flooding. It's estimated roughly a billion live today, less than 10 metres above current high tide lines including 250, 2 plus 5, for a 7 million below 1. So we've got our 7 centimetres and our 250 for a 7. And this is from uh, Professor Andy Shepherd. Storms, if they happen against a baseline of higher seas, they will break flood defences. So scare, 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 scare. So this is Professor Andy Shepherd. Put Shepherd into a calculator and Chaldean numerology is 37 for three sevens for 777. And quite a few of these climate scientists have coded names. But uh, let's move on. Okay, so this goes blah, 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 blah. All the experts or pseudoscientists all talking about spacecraft and satellites. So you know that's a pile of shite to start with. And it says, what emerges is the most comprehensive picture yet of how Greenland is reacting to the Arctic's rapid warming. This is part of the globe that has seen a 0.75 centigrade temperature rise in the past decade. So look, 7 and 5 for 12, reverse it for 21, for 777, also 12 are 12 sides of a heptagram, which is a six-pointed star, which they love their, num their numerology and they love their symbolism. Okay, so this is about IMBI assessment and the mass is equivalent to 10.6 millimetres sea level rise. One plus six for a seven, or you can say 10 plus six for 16 for a 7, it makes no odds. Uh, and apparently um, the rate of loss was about 1 millimetre per decade. It's now running at roughly, course, our wonderful 7, 777. In between member, Dr. Ruth Motram. So she's got the RAM here in the name. Always a good one for a hoax name, that. But look what happens when you put Dr. Ruth Mottram into a Pythagorean calculator. You get 63 for three sixes 
for 666. As I said, all those scientists are goaded. In an average year now, an average year now, Greenland sheds about 250 billion tons of ice. So there's our 250 again. Last time it was talking about people, this time it's ice. So there's our another seven. And it says in the coastal town of, however you say that, uh, oh, I won't try. Not far from the mighty Jakob Sarven glacier. And put that into a calculator. And in Chaldean, 33 for masonry. So is this glacier what they say it is? Or is it a free Masonic made up piece of bullshit? Okay. The ice loss this year was more like 370 billion. So there's our three sevens for 777. And then uh, gave a mid range projection for global sea level rise of about 60 centimeters by 22100. So the year. 2100 and of course 21 is for 777 add the 6 and the 21 you get 27 for two sevens for 77 so code code and more code okay um blah 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 the shortfall is seven centimeters and the assessment report uh, is ar6 so that adds up 1 plus 18 plus 6 for 25 for a 7. And we've got another professor here, because if they've got prof in front of them, you have to believe it. But put prof Forsberg into a calculator, and in Pythagorean, it's 7, 3 for three sevens for 7, 7, 7. And of course, we're going to have a new satellite system. So a, a new made-up system producing a new made-up pile of bollocks. And we've all got to believe this. If you really believe these, the shit guys, you want your heads testing. You really do. Okay, so what have we got now? Why does Greenland matter? Okay, essentially because the ice sheet is seven times. I missed that one, but I've just seen it. The area of the UK. So there we go for another seven. And it's made up of two to three kilometer thick ice. Two threes for 33. And if it all melted, it would rise sea levels worldwide by up to seven metres. So are you seeing, guys, the code in this? Can you see that this is coded, made up bullshit? Eh? And think about green land. What term do we use to combat climate change or global warming? We use the term go green, don't we? Well, we've got green land here. How can it be Greenland when it's white? It should be white land. Is this just been all planned for many, 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 many years? Okay, so what have we got here? We've got another scientist, a doctor this time. Not a professor, but a doctor, Jason Box. And look what Dr. Jason Box comes out in a calculator. 37 in Chaldean for three sevens for 777. And we've got this Geological Survey of Denmark and Greenland, which is GEUS. GEU is 33 for masonry, and GEUS in English is 52. 5 plus 2 for a 7. And of course, look what colour coat Dr. Box has got on. Yeah. So we're into Dr. Box, into a cube maybe, another symbol here. But orange is 33 in Pythagorean numerology. OK, so we're moving on from the British Bullshit Corporation and we're now on to CNN. And they've got a little article and uh, it's talking about the Arctic and snow and stuff like that. It says in 2019, average air temperatures in the Arctic were 1.9 degrees Celsius, 3.1, sorry, 3.42 degrees Fahrenheit. So there's a three. And four plus two for a six, for three sixes, for six, six, six. And further in this article, it says a couple of degrees of warming in Florida is something you may not even notice. But in the Arctic, going from 31 degrees to 33 degrees, 
Fahrenheit, you're going from ice skating to swimming in the Arctic Ocean. So there's our 33 for masonry. Now here again, I can't read all this blah, 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 fish and all this shite. Let's throw whatever they can in. But uh, we've got the 13 lowest sea ice extents in the satellite record. Well, there you go. Pile of rubbish. Have now all occurred in the last 13 years. So we've got a couple of 13s there. Okay, so um, this is about another pile of rubbish, obviously, but it says as recently as 1985, older and thicker ice made up 33% of the sea ice at the end of the winter. So come on, guys, you must see that this is a hoax. There's another 33, for God's sake. Okay, now, this probably sums it all up. So I probably could, just needed to put this page on. So all the climate change nonsense is all based on the greenhouse effect. And that is where gases are meant to warm up from infrared ra radiation from the ground that the sun's heated up. Now, if we didn't have the greenhouse gas, and you can find this reference in multiple locations it says based on the natural presence of greenhouse gases water vapor which is meant to be in their own science something like 95 percent of the greenhouse effect and a tiny bit from carbon dioxide there is a temperature difference of 33 degrees according to the current state of research so that there is saying the greenhouse effect is a part of shite because look, it's got 33. This means that without the greenhouse gases, the average temperature on Earth would be around 18 degrees. Three sixes for 666. So there you go, guys. If you want to know if the greenhouse effect is real, just look at this. It isn't. It's Freemasonic made up pile of shite that they are going to make people's lives a misery with. Now, I tried to look at Greenland and I've looked all around the coast. It's meant to have this mega piece of ice sitting on top of it. Now, most of the population, there isn't that many, are in towns here. And access is by basically aircraft or boats. There's no roads across it. There's very, very, maybe just one or two towns here. There's very little here. Now, the Greenland and ice sheet the thickest is 66,000 to 9800 and the area is 660,000 so do you see some sixes in here but then when you and I'm sorry it's not the most perfect circle so this is off Google Earth and what I've done is I've shaded in a band around this make-believe globe to show you where the ice sheet is. So it's basically in this light shaded area. But the only place we've got a big piece of ice is here. Not here, not here. Well, there's a little bit here, but this is all clear. Now you all shout, oh, landmass, landmass. But look, this hasn't got landmasses. Why isn't this all covered with ice? How is this covered in ice and this isn't? I don't, you know, what's all this about? And even Iceland which is in the same band, is not covered in ice. It's more appropriately named than Greenland. But does that make sense? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Now, moving on, I've given you a lot of code. Now, I travel to Copenhagen quite a lot with my job. I go around and I take some photographs and things. And I like to learn the geography and layout of the area. Now, what... The subject of this little bit of the video is this salt home here. Yeah. Now, this is an island that is very, very, very low lying. Yeah. And it's been there for hundreds and hundreds of years. Now, I'm saying sea level rise. What sea level rise? Because this island, uh, humans have lived in small numbers on salt home since the Middle Ages and probably before. Sultan was used as a quarantine station between 1709 and 1711 when Copenhagen suffered plague and cholera outbreaks. 
The population has ranged from a peak of 298 people in 1916, when the island was fortified during World War I, to only five people as of January 2008. The current inhabitants manage the farm home guard on a nature reserve in the northwest of the island to maintain the grass for nesting birds. The island was for many years considered as a possible location for a new international airport and fixed link between Denmark and Sweden. Decision not to build it was a commercial decision and it wasn't based on rising sea levels. Now what you can see here, this is the island. The uh, railway and road bridge from Copenhagen or to Malmo or from Sealand to Malmo goes under a tunnel, comes onto this man-made island and then goes across a bridge. So this is Malmo in Sweden and this is near to Castrop, the Copenhagen airport. Now, there's another image. This isn't one I've taken, but this is the highest point on the, on the island and it's like a little ridge with trees on and it's around 15 to 17 feet. Okay, so if we look at it on Google Earth, it's here. And putting the cursor over there, it comes up at 17 feet. So this is the bridge, and this is Melmo in Sweden. So the average elevation is around 4.5 feet, or 1.4 meters. Much of the coastal coast of this island is around 1 foot, or 0.3 meters. Bear in mind, this has been there for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. OK, so I've done a few little uh, path marks using Google Earth and I've shown the profile. So this is the high point. So you can see here, this is a four foot line and here's the high point. And most of the island is around four. This goes up to five or six and around the, coat, the area here, it drops to about zero or just above zero, maybe one feet. So that's this line here. Let's take another look at another one. So what I'm looking at now is this long line across the length of the island. Here's the four foot line and you can see it's way below at the start here. And then it goes up five feet there, uh, maybe six feet here. And then it tends to be below. So you can see the little bit above it and the bit below. Uh, and now we'll look at the, another line in a different direction. So this is the four foot line. So along the start, it's just around zero to one feet with the water lapping around. It goes up to about six. So you can work that out. I've worked it out looking at that. And it's around 4.5 feet average. But the area around it is much, much lower. So a very, very low island. And people build uh, holiday um, homes in remote parts of Denmark and they're building them on land that's one meter at the most above sea level. Now the insurance won't insure them or they charge them a fortune because of the fake global warming scandal, but uh, they still build them and they still live there and they've done for many, many years. So the airport you can see is here. So I travelled, just got on the, the metro and got off Castrop. I went to take some photographs. So uh, this is the island, as you can see, very, very low. This is with a high magnification. I can't quite remember what it was, but uh, I've got a 260 times magnification. And this is the uh, very fancy building here in Melmo. So you can see it's pulled this very, very close, this island. Is another photograph. So this here is is the high point that I showed you. You can see this bit here. You even see swans and birds on this island. It's a couple of miles, two or three miles away. Um, but you can see this. This is around about a foot in height, something like that. There's uh, some buildings on there. Um, again, high zoom. This is only a few feet here to this fence. This is the farm. And you remember if I said that there was a farm. So again, high zoom 
um, but you can see it all. Uh, and a little bit more, nice photograph of a boat, uh, but uh, you can see the land is incredibly low. And uh, just to show you that I was by the airport and here's the bridge in the background. Here's an A380, uh, obviously no fuel in the wings, but that's another another one of my videos. Uh, but that's coming in uh, to land at Castrop. And of course, the coastline around Denmark is blighted with these useless windmills that they put in, which is basically a massive visual reminder of the climate change hoax. Now, with all this sea level rise and all this propaganda of islands disappearing beneath the waves, don't you think that Salt Home would be underwater by now? But it's not. It's been there for hundreds and hundreds of years and the water level hasn't changed at all. And uh, the Danish people, if they open their eyes and they can see past the windmills, they'll see evidence all around them the sea levels aren't rising. But unfortunately, in that part of the world, people are maybe more indoctrinated than any other area in the world into climate change and are prepared to pay all kinds of taxes on new cars and everything um, because it is part of their religion at the moment. Hopefully, they will see through that. But uh, Salt Home's been there for many, many years and it'll be there for many, many hundreds of years to come because global warming and climate change is all a pile of Freemasonic made up bullshit. OK, so that's the end of the video. So I hope you like some of my uh, photographs there. I thought I'd better put a bit of personal experience in. But uh, what I will say is uh, climate change is a shabby hoax. Greenhouse effect is fake. I think the Greenland glacier is very dodgy or the ice sheet, maybe even made up along with Antarctica. It all fuels this nonsense of global warming. And of course, it's a great big turd and you might as well put a familiar face within the great big turd that talks bullshite and loads more bullshite. And of course, it's coded to death. So... Uh, Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.